another edition of Lee Chess Plays. It's your favorite time of the week, right? Let's get started here. We got a bunch of challenges in the queue. You can see over 50 challenges. Love to see that. People are at the ready to take me down. Excellent. Okay, let's play a Smithmore Gambit. Tell our opponent good luck. Play that to start out. I like playing this Gambit from time to time. It's nice and active. I feel like I get pretty reasonable positions out of it. Sometimes you have to play it kind of strategically, but that just goes with the territory. Greetings to everyone following on both YouTube and Twitch. Hello, King Berserk. I see you tuning in from uh, Berlin. Thank you so much. Uh, Joshua Curtis, as well as Social. And uh, Gabriel Fernandez, I see you as well. Thank you, thank you. Make sure to get your challenges in. Make sure it's a three-minute game. Oh, coincidentally, I was just looking at this line with a student just this morning. Bishop g7, e5. So maybe we can get that in. Cramping move. Now, it does leave the pawn uh, susceptible to capture because black is attacking that twice. We're only defending it once. But if you play the Smith Mora, you'll know what comes next. What's up, Imha? Hello, Imtio Chess. Did I see you at the Minnesota International? Yeah, I was there a couple days ago. I was there on uh, Friday night. Oh, that's probably MT Iowa Chess, now that I look at your username a little more closely. Good luck if you're playing in the tournament. So this is the big idea. Lure the black king out, then play queen d5. King f6 is too dangerous. It's going to run into uh, this move, or I think even knight f4 would be okay. Hello, Belgian novice, by the way. Good to see you in the chat. Harry Chess, Curious Mountain Crawler. Rye Bread Fung Fungus, good to see you too. Okay, so black goes back, and now I'm going to take, hit the rook in the corner. Yes, this move is forced. Now, already I'm thinking pretty concretely here if I have some way to win the game. Knight d5 looks good at first sight because knight takes, I win the rook, but there's queen a5 check, the small detail of queen a5 check. So I'm thinking maybe bishop h6 here. I do like the look of this move because it threatens bishop g7. I think bishop f6 is also pretty reasonable, but let's uh, let's play this one. What do you think the chances are that Elvin Jones blunders and plays knight g4, looking for a fork? Allowing this. I'm going to pre-move this because it seems like a risk-free pre-move. Okay, but they play a much better move, d6. d6, I like it. Okay, let's go back... Uh, Let's go back here. Did I watch Casino yet? No. We were talking about it on my channel last night. We were talking about some movies. No, I didn't get a chance to watch it. I got to rewatch it, though, because I do like that one. Hello, Eddie G. I see you on YouTube. Also, Jagadesh. And just as a reminder, if you want to get your challenges in, just make sure it's a 3 plus 0 standard chess challenge. It can be casual or rated. This one's rated. I will put my rating on the line for you guys. That's how much I think of you. I'm willing to give you a free opportunity to win my points. I like you guys that much. <laughs> and as usual, shout out to Lee Chess for making this happen. Lee Chess Plays. It's a weekly event. And I always look forward to it. Okay, I think Bishop G7 is working now. Rook G8. Take, take, take this pawn. How large of an advantage are we going to get from there? Remains to be seen, but I am going to start with this. Just useful to pick off that pawn on d6. I have a slight time advantage here. Ever so slight. Queen opposing queen with one piece in between. It's very important that black doesn't have a discovery with this bishop with check. Now here, you know what really... Catches my eye is playing uh, the move knight e4. Because if black takes here, I take, and I'm going to win the rook. But I actually don't see much after queen e7. Queen e7 might be a sufficient reply. So I'm probably just going to play like here. Yeah, we'll play queen c5, hit this pawn. It's equal material, knight versus bishop, but... My knight has a nice square on e4 at all times. I do need to get castled probably sometime soon. Could play knight e4, but again, um, 
Oh, maybe queen e7 I could have taken on e5, but let's just castle. I like just getting the king to safety here. Work up to this move. Hello, Deep Blue 1989. What's up, Morphe's Law, by the way? I see you in the chat. Now it's time for 94. Good evening, AKT, AKT Flare. Take this one. We got check coming in. Hello, John Carter as well. All right. Um, yeah, let's give the check here. Maybe I can just pick up a pawn. I don't know that I can win more than that in the short term, but my opponent has five seconds, so it's looking pretty good. Let's go take this. And that's game over. Thank you, Elvin, for the game. GG. Yeah, so this Bishop G7 line, I think, is pretty effectively met by E5. If you run this through the engine, it's going to show rough equality here. You don't necessarily have to take the pawn. You can play knight h6. I think that might be the best try for black. I think you can also try d6 here, but no doubt this pawn has a cramping effect. Um, as played, once this, this occurs, I think king g7 is the best move. But after takes, white is still down a pawn, but they have very good compensation on the dark squares. So this is some known smith Mora gambit stuff. No denim board today? I mean, I can bring it back if you guys want. But we'll see. Okay, Arabella, good luck to you. Let's play another E4 game. Hello, Michael Machos on YouTube. I see you. Hello, Reed, by the way. Yes, yeah, so I hope we get a game, Eddie. Okay, so I just played Smith Morrow. Let's play an open Sicilian. We're going to go Knight F3 and D4. Now, as a rule, if black does not capture on C5, you almost always want to play D5. And this could actually lead to trouble pretty quickly for black if black chooses the wrong move here. It's already a little shaky, but let's see what black does. Knight before, okay. Yeah, knight e7, I was going to play d6, and then I can quickly get queen e2 in, so this is a better attempt. But undoubtedly, the knight is kind of walking around, um, prancing around, maybe. I could still think about d6. It's an interesting try. Let's actually play it. I'm kind of curious how black's going to respond. Because this does threaten queen e2. Yeah, which black is allowing. Check. All right. And next... All right, so here's the thing about this. I don't necessarily have to take this yet because black is kind of an immortal pin, you know? Let's go knight a3. reason I'm going knight a3 is to take some load off of uh, this the defense of this pawn for my queen. Yeah, and black really wants to castle, but this walks into another problem. So you can sometimes drag out those pins. You don't need to capitalize if your opponent has a mortally pinned piece. You might win more by dragging it out. Does kid mode affect the challenge request? I'm actually not sure about that. That's above my um, understanding. <laughs> That's like a 2200 ELO question, and I'm like a mere 1100. Okay, now do I want to be really cruel? I mean, this is Lee Chess Plays, so cruelty is the name of the game. <laughs> but here too, I don't necessarily have to take. Let's develop. All right, we got some Brazilians. In the chat. I see you guys. Shout out to all the viewers around the world. Um, let's castle queenside now. We might lose this pawn, but... Ooh, actually, I gotta be a little careful. If takes here, I was gonna go king v1, but that actually walks into knight c3. So knight takes a2. I gotta go here. Cruelty is my obligation. I know, right? It's a tough world we live in. Bishop c4. I'm not going to retreat this. I'm just going to defend this pawn and also attack the knight on d5. That seems like a good idea to me. Now, if I check, there's knight e7, so I probably should take. And we're left with a completely winning position. Let's give a check. Um, let's take here, check. 
Go h4. Just kind of box in that enemy king. Check. And this should be checkmate in a matter of moves. Let me think how I'm going to set it up. Black's got a couple squares available at the moment. I think f3 is a pretty natural move here. Take away g4. Also block the bishop a little bit. But we are very close to a checkmate, folks. Um, again, how do I do it, though? Let's go here. Maybe this, this. Might be the way. Black can disrupt it a little bit, though. Rook f6. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, let's check. 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 Take. Zero in on g7. I should be enough pe up enough pieces at this point to get the job done. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Um, someone in the Twitch chat said, the bing sound when a game starts now changed when a player makes the first move. I'm glad you guys keep me apprised of these things because I, I don't play with sounds ever. <laughs> so thank you for keeping me apprised. Okay, where's my mate? This is not checkmate because black can take my knight. I can go here and then this. King f8, but there's still no immediate mate. So the way to checkmate here might be to just like move a rook over. I don't know. Set this up. Kind of boring. Set up the ladder mate, but effective. All right. Thank you for the game, Arabella. Yeah. So when white plays d4 in the Sicilian, black almost always wants to capture. There's very few exceptions to that. So especially if it's done early, you want to go ahead and make that capture. Because if you allow d5, this can be trouble. I was showing the effect of this, which is kind of similar to the game. Shove the pawn all the way to d6. If the knight moves, check. And black gets caught down the funnel here on the e-file. Black played knight b4, but I still think this is kind of an issue. Although the engine does not like my d6 move. Um, a3. Oh, does that win material more easily? What happens if knight a6? Okay, now d6 looks kind of similar. There's probably some subtle difference, though. But it really likes this. Wow. This is one of these, like, classic, to our human eyes, inflated engine evaluations, plus 7.6. Like, definitely this looks good. But it doesn't look like plus 8 uh, or higher. <laughs> so suffice it to say, black is taking some serious risks by not capturing the pawn on d4. Thanks for the game, Arabella. Let's go to the next one. Ariane, I see you in the challenge list. Okay, Yule. Good luck to you, 2027. Uh, let's play C5 on move one. Mix it up a little bit. Should I play the Clarendon court defense? F5. Obi Arnold, greetings to you. I see you. What's up? What's up? Okay, knight c3. Now, I feel like d6 or knight f6 are the moves here. Let's go d6 first. Very odd pawn structure, but I, I dabble with this from time to time. Stopping d4 is the entire point of c5. Is it not? Ask Rybred Fungus. Well, I guess you could, you could think of the Sicilian as an attempt to influence d4 with a flank pawn rather than a center pawn, like in the case of e5. That's how I think of it, at least. White's going to go e4. No, bishop g5. Okay. All right, let's fiend keto. I guess I don't mind a capture here. I'm okay with that. Hmm, interesting way that white's playing this. Let's go here. This has some Jinji Indian vibes to it. Definitely. So this is... Perhaps in anticipation of white castling this way. Might be nice to have my queen over here, like always eyeing up the a2 pawn, even if I can't capture it right away. Still looks nice. I think knight bd7 also makes sense, but I want to see if white takes and gives me the dark square play. John, how come you don't go clean shaven anymore? You know, it's just a force of habit. I've been sporting this uh, kind of short beard for quite a while, probably about the last oof, five, six years. You kind of get used to it. 
it's nice. It does not require nearly as much maintenance as shaving regularly. I'll tell you that. I just trim it from time to time. So it's really actually convenient because shaving is annoying. Shaving is uh, irritating to my skin. It's just annoying. But I don't know. Maybe I'll bring the clean shave and look back. All right. Queen trade. So here, I think F5 makes sense, but I'm not so sure about knight G5. I could play bishop H6, but there's like F4 or H4. So I might want to hold off on that move. Let's play king F7. Mm. Yeah, I think it's okay. King F7. Just keep these pawns protected. This is guarded, so no worries there. The knight's a little irritating. Speaking of irritation, I'd like to get rid of it, but F5 does weaken that square, so that's kind of what I'm grappling with here. Good afternoon, R. Beasley as well. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, maybe Bishop H6 now and then Rook D8. Strikes me as interesting. Bishop F5 also. I'm going to give it a check. We'll see where that king goes. Yeah, and then just cover here. I still have to figure out how to unwind this situation. Because I can't go knight d7. I lose this. Maybe now I'm ready for f5, actually. That might be my next move, depending upon what white does. We go here. Shaving is coarse, rough, and it gets everywhere. That's got to be a uh, Star Wars reference. Like an Anakin reference. <laughs> Very nice read. This position looks pretty good to me. Because my dark square bishop is, is fairly dominant. White needs some sort of pawn break. Like if I were playing white, I would definitely think about h4, h5. Because I don't think there's a whole lot else to do here. We'll go knight d7, stop knight b6. And now I'm ready to expand on this wing as well. Ooh, b5 is an automatic move here. Take, take, open up the a file. I think this is getting pretty, um, pretty risky for white. Let's play b4. Now, if knight here, I think I'm going to throw this move in first before taking. This helps defend the d6 pawn yet again. Is this the same knight that was over on the other side of the board? I think it was. Yeah, I guess it only made it to e4, but it did come back. So white has moved that knight a lot in the first uh, 20 moves of this game. Okay, interesting defensive move here, because if I take, there is bishop e6. So I think I'm going to take here instead. I hate giving up this beautiful bishop, but I can win the pawn down here by doing that. So let's do it. We'll go here next. Looks pretty decent. Maybe here now. Get ready to double if white moves this knight. Also, maybe c4 on the way. Yeah, I really like c4. We got some great momentum here. b3. Oh, yeah, we got to play it like this. This looks really nice. I'm almost able to mate white now. Not quite, though. Should I go here? Anticipating a pre-move. Yep. <laughs> Oftentimes, people pre-move when they think that you have, like, a force capture. So it looked like rook takes d5 is what I was going to play. So white, you know, is in time pressure. We're both in time pressure. Wants to go here. But this one is kind of nasty, too. I mean, white has rook e7 check. Thank you for the game, Yule. But king f8 should be winning. Thanks for the game, Yule. Once again... This is definitely a dubious opening for black, but it's interesting. You know, it's not something that white will have encountered very much. Um, Black's trying to influence the e4 square in the style of a Sicilian, but from the other side. I do think uh, e4 right here would have been the most testing, no. Engine loves it. Engine loves it. IMs in, in uh, Lee Chess plays. Absolutely hate it. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know what I would have done against that. Probably knight f6, but looks a little unpleasant. Imagine if he pre-moved bishop takes b3. Let's see what the engine thinks about my decision at the end. Best move. That's why I got the Lee chess plays gig. You know, not, not the pedestrian, not the banal rook takes d5. The sophisticated rook d to a8. <laughs> Minus 10. Yeah. Bishop takes b3. I could, I could actually just take back because we maintain the two threats. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the game. Let's go to the next one. Your own. 1363. Let's play d4 in this game. That's right, Trip. That's right. Okay. Um, let's play maybe a Jobava London. Knight c3, look for bishop f4. Yeah, Clarendon Court. Mm hmm. Go queen d2. By the way, uh, little Lee Chess announcement. Did you guys see that Lee Chess is uh, partnering on a series of Chess 960 events that are uh, qualifications for um, the Chess 960, I think, World Championship? Someone please correct me if that's not the case. But I saw the announcement. There's a bunch of uh, qualifiers that you can play that are just arenas on Lee Chess. You guys should definitely take a look at them. They've already started running. So if you have an interest in 960, maybe consider playing one of them. Okay, castles. I like having the pawns out here. We're hindering e5, and we're ready to play bishop h6 in the near future. We shall see. Okay, knight bd7. Now, I think that move is slightly inaccurate. I looked at this recently. Is it because of e5? No. It's not because of e5. Is it because of f3? I don't quite recall. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna play f3. It's a standard move in these structures. Just uh, restricts the knight, stabilizes e4, makes me ready for this move. Any idea about when the tutor update is coming? Uh, no, I don't know anything more than you guys. So I know Lee Chess is developing that. It looks pretty cool. Okay, take. Now black absolutely cannot take with the knight. If you take with the knight, bishop takes e5 is going to hurt. Now here it looks like bishop takes e5 should be good, but I think there is knight takes e4 in reply to that. So I'm going to go ahead and play this move instead. We're going to go for the trade of the bishops. Hello, Blitzkrieg. Good to see you too. Uh, thank you, Jagadesh. You like the climbing the rating ladder videos. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. Okay, knight h5. And I want to continue the uh, attack here. But first, let's go here. Develop. I want to control f4 a little bit better. I'm at some point going to take... I guess I'll pre-move this. It'd be nice if, if black took me because then I could land my queen in. Look for the G and the H pawns to run. Ooh, and this move, warning bells are going off because this is left undefended or weakly defended. Now, I might only win an exchange out of this. Or sorry, I actually don't even win the exchange. Oh, no, 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 I do. But I got to meet this with king over. My brain was glitching for a second. I was like, how does that work for black? But yeah, we're going to take. And now when this is played, I'm not blocking with the queen. Because then we only get a bishop for the queen. We're going to go here. So that on bishop takes, or sorry, so on rook takes, I could take the rook with check. Which now is going to be winning an entire rook because this comes with check. Is there a limit for challenges? Yeah, so it seems to cap out at 50, at least what it displays here. But, uh... If someone challenges beyond 50, that, that does show up. And this is checkmate. 
Okay, thank you for the game, Your own. Yeah, so it's a little uncomfortable for you, I think, right around here. Probably okay, though. Probably not too bad. Engine says sit tight, c6, queen e7. Yeah, c6 is helpful. It just stops the knight from coming up. Um. Oh, it was actually e5 here. Yeah, I didn't quite remember this. Oh, the nuance that I probably forgot about is that on knight h5, you go bishop h6 anyways. Because even in this situation, it's hard for black to take the pawn. That's right. Knight takes e5, queen takes d8 again. Bishop takes e5, we can take uh, f8. Although, actually, we can't take it right away because of bishop f4. What happens on this? Is it... Oh, interesting. You actually just play it like a gambit. I don't think I realized that when I went through it the first time. This runs into this. But the computer is very optimistic otherwise for white. Probably because rook e8 is super defensive and white's ready to attack here. Okay, I'm going to have to remember that, f3. You know, there is a line with knight c6 as well, whereupon f3 is a good approach. But against knight bd7, it does look like e5 is the move. It's funny how your memory works in chess. Like, that was the move that came to mind, but I couldn't remember how it worked concretely or if it was the right move. So I ultimately didn't play it. Yeah, thanks for the game, Ron. Again, maybe you can save it later. But uh, probably got to play some defensive moves. And then here, this bishop takes h6 move is your, your only chance, but it is, it is suffering here. Who's up next? Foz 24, 1738. Let's do this. I'm going to play knight f3 in this one. We'll play a number of different openings. Oh, thank you, by the way, Geo. Good luck to Foz. Okay, d5. d5 is a very good response to knight f3. I must say, let's play like a ready style move. c4. Uh, Blitzkrieg on YouTube says, John, I struggle with fear of losing in chess. I play puzzles all the time, but never quite can play games. How do I enjoy playing more and lose my fear? Yeah, it's a very common one. You know, probably nothing I'm going to say is going to truly help, but I would encourage you to... Put yourself in the shoes of a kid or try to remember your childhood when you were just purely interested in something um, for the sheer fascination of it, you know, and you didn't think about the uh, sporting implications of it or the uh, pain of losing, the humiliation, the sadness, the sleepless nights. <laughs> you have to, as much as possible, try to Put yourself in that mindset and, and enjoy what is a beautiful game and ultimately not that serious in the scheme of things. You know, I'm always amazed. Like I go to chess tournaments, even though I haven't played one for a while, I've actually attended two tournaments in back-to-back -back weekend, weekends here. And looking at the kids like playing chess with their buddies in between rounds, to me is always really inspiring because uh, I remember what it was like to just have that sheer love for the game. And I still do have a lot of love for uh, chess, of course. But kids never think about, like, rating when they're first starting out. They don't think, oh, like, what if I lose two, three games in a row? Like, what's going to happen? They just go and play. And I think adults have to be reminded of that. I'm winning a piece here, by the way. Also stopping Black from castling. <laughs> right handles. <laughs> All right, bishop f5. Looks like a good move. It does allow for uh, rook b8 maybe. I'm thinking maybe bishop here might be decent. Also, c5 could make some sense, but I actually like the idea of uh, preventing my opponent from castling, although there is some issues here, aren't there? I should be a bit careful. Maybe d3 is called for. Let's think. It's just like ever so slightly tricky here. I think D3 is okay though. But watch for counterplay when you're in a better or winning position. The game often becomes how can I shut down the enemy counterplay? 
So I don't want to have to play moves or think about playing moves like that purely based on react, reacting to what Black's doing. I want to have these planned out in advance. Yeah, you know, it's, it's always adults who uh, have those sort of mindset problems. So just know that you're not alone. There's a lot of players who, you know, try to convince themselves that they can study their way to chess success. No, you got to get in there. You got to get in the arena and just play at some point. You know, you can try to put it off for a while, but just know that there will be no better uh, vehicle for improvement for you than playing some serious games, rapid games online at minimum, and hopefully some tournaments someday. This looks super defensive, but I think I have everything covered still, and I am up a piece. Queen guards this. Now I just want to work these into the game. Not really sure what, what black does here. I'm ready for like bishop f4, knight d2. Oh, what's up, Jamie? I am playing viewers today. That is correct. This is Lee Chess Plays. Shout out to Lee Chess once again for making this happen. We all love Lee Chess. Take advantage of all the tools. Check out, uh, for example, under the watch tab, the broadcasts. If you guys have never checked that out, you're uh, missing out on tons and tons of tournaments around the world getting live relayed. Like you can follow the... Uh, FTX Cup, which is going on, the finals, might still be going. Magnus is currently playing playing uh, Prague. And lots of other tournaments, too. If you like, for example, Eric Rosen, he streams a lot on Lee Chess. He's playing in a tournament in uh, Abu Dhabi right now. Really, really strong event. And all those games are being carried on Lee Chess. Okay, Rook B1. I'm thinking about how I can get at this. Um, this move might run into this. Probably knight e6 is the way. This one looks really good. Just hit the rook. I'm try to play a little faster here because we are getting into time pressure. Yeah, now let's go rook over. Hit the queen. I'm going to go here because my bishop's undefended, so now I actually threaten to move this knight away. A oh, rook b7 actually was uh, straight up trapping the queen, wasn't it? That was better. But bishop g3 still plenty good. Yes, thank you for the game. GG. This one was determined kind of early with this queen a4 move. Yeah, so you took the uh, poison pawn and immediately ran into problems. I think this is winning for white. Oh, not so. Not so. I spoke too soon. It's winning if you play knight c6, but not if you play knight d7. Let's try to figure out why. I think I see why, but it's, it's rather subtle. What do you guys think? So if knight fd7, now if I take here, black's going to take here. That's one point. So if I take here, what does black play in this position and why? I'm kind of semi-guessing here. I don't know for, sh for certain what the next move is, but I have a pretty good idea. That's right, Foz. <laughs> I see your note. Check. That is correct. Queen e7. Queen e7 check. And that buys time for black to cover the bishop. I can respond with a check. So respond to a check with a check of my own. But then I think bishop d7. I can't take here. I'm pinned. And uh, I can't simultaneously defend the queen and the knight. Something's got to give. Wow. Okay, so knight fd7 keeps black in the game. Or knight bd7, kind of similar. Yeah, due to queen e7. Oh, even knight c6 is playable here. That's, that's nuts. And my knight is trapped. Elementary. The knight is trapped. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I don't play a whole lot of these ready structures. I kind of get wrecked when I do. I lost a really bad game in title Tuesday. Maybe uh, a month or two ago when I tried to play the white side of this, but some interesting stuff here. Okay, thanks for the game, Foz. Let's keep rolling along. 
Wow. 1773. Good luck to you. All right. Um, let's play, let's play Karakon. Yeah, chess is endlessly surprising, right? Like that last tactical resource. Oh, a bunch of you on YouTube got it. Nice. Oh, that's nice to hear, co-practice. Or co-practice. Copatiousness? Co is that a word? I got to look that up. That is a word. Oh, copacetic. Wow, I butchered that pronunciation of this English word. Copacetic. It means in excellent order. Wow, I learned a vocab word today. How many of you knew that? <laughs> That's some SAT word. All right, let's go bishop d6. Now, I usually send the knight to f6, but I might send it to e7. Might send it here. This this enables plans like this and this in the middle game. It's kind of interesting. Um, f5? That would be an ambitious move here. How do we feel about it? Let's try it. Again, I don't normally play this line this way, but it looks interesting. Oh, it's in the Big Lebowski? Interesting. I don't remember that. Let's go here. So I'm still threatening F4. But undoubtedly when I play F5, this is a bit shaky. But it demands a response from white. And white is allowing this. So I'm just judging like whether it's safe to play. I think it is because I also control the um, g6 square pretty well. So that is a smothered bishop, unfortunately, for white. And if b5, I think I'll probably just take. Because if take here, I take this one. I'm happy with that, that chain of captures. Right, Pizza Racer? <laughs> Once you learn a new word, you will suddenly hear it often. Yeah, there's a name for that effect, which someone in the chat will know. There's a name for that phenomenon. Castle Queenside, maybe? Synchronicity. Bader Minoff, yeah. I think that's it. Or Bader Minoff. You suddenly start hearing it everywhere. Bedur Bo Jobava. Okay, looking good here. Up the piece. I'm going to meet b5 with knight a5. Just kind of block off the uh, queen side attack. Mm-hmm. Should I take... Or should I take the bishop first? I think take the bishop first. It's just an easier move. Take again. Yeah, we're still up the piece. I am down on the clock, so let's not completely fall asleep here. <laughs> Everyone's dropping uh, vocab words in the chat. I love it. Okay, let's go H5 now. White Castle this way, that's our signal to attack. Let's go. Take. Oh, and resign. Oh, I actually didn't notice that this was hanging. I was ready to take here. But wow, uh, resigned before I could capture. That's one of those moments. Like they, I'm sure they resigned because they saw the bishop only after the fact. But I, I actually missed that at that moment. 
Okay, thank you for the game. Let's see what the engine thinks about F5. I have a feeling it's not going to like it compared to like Bishop G6 or something. But it's interesting. You know, it uh, demands some precision from white. So Knight G5 is okay. But yeah, here you do need to pay, pay some heed to the F4 threat. Computer says F4 yourself, which actually makes a great deal of sense. You know, it creates this backward pawn here. That might be a nice solution. Very complicated game in store. I'd probably play like Rook C8 looking for Knight B4. Something along those lines. Okay, so thanks for the game. Just watch those uh, boxed in pieces there. Nightingale, good luck to you. 2200. Exactly 2200. Wow, very consistent between Bullet and Blitz. Oh, it's my move. I should probably play a move. Hmm. Yeah, I am challenging random people, or selecting random challenges, that is. It's purely randomized, so if you challenge at any moment, you just get put in a pool of players. Looks like Nightingale is not here. You can always re-challenge Nightingale if you want. And everyone has an equal chance of getting selected. Okay, Ziga is next. All right, let's play Sicilian this time. Let's see what White throws at me. Ooh, maybe a little Smith Mora action from uh, the White side here. Should I take it? I usually don't take it. But let's capture. Let's see what happens. Knight c6. I'll play e6. Mm hmm. a6. Now, I think this is a challenging line, but uh, there's various sacrifices white can play here. So be advised, especially with knight d5. Knight d5 can be tried at various times. I do not think a4 is a good move. I might have played b5, but I don't think it's worth it for white to kind of waste a move on that this early. I think white should have castled or maybe played their dark square bishop out, like maybe bishop g5. Okay, so now I'm going to go here. Look to play bishop e7 and castle short. My light square bishop is definitely kind of in prison. That is correct. I, I can't argue with that. But that's okay. It's going to come into the picture later. It's castle. I'm allowing white to play e5, but I'm not greatly concerned about that move right now. <clears throat> Maybe I'll even play d6 at this point. Um, what else makes sense here? I could get radical with f5, but I don't quite like that. It seems a little bit loose. Like if take, rook takes, there's bishop takes e6. Maybe b6. You know, b6 actually looks pretty reasonable here. Yeah, let's play that. Let's try to get the bishop in this way. Bishop b4 is the Geary recommendation. Ah, interesting. That seems very engine-y. I know there's some some games with that, but uh, I guess the idea is to try to take the knight on c3 in a lot of cases. Okay, let's go here. I'm setting up almost a hedgehog-style formation. The pawn might come here, especially if white starts attacking down the file. Yeah, that too. That's right. If f5, white could even take there right away. So we are definitely not ready for f5. Okay. Uh, rook c8 seems reasonable. So th this is one of the difficulties with the smith Mora gambit. If black knows what they're doing or plays a reasonable accepted line, even if they don't know what they're doing, you can get into these middle games where white doesn't have a lot, a lot to sink their teeth into. You're nicely centralized, but you are still down the pond, searching for compensation. I was actually asking my chat on stream last night on my personal channel what they thought about this. But if you guys were to guess, like what are some gambits that um, are fairly mainstream, but in actual fact might be refuted if the other side plays absolutely perfect? Like I was asking my chat, do you think the King's Gambit is lost for white if black plays absolutely perfect chess?
And what about Smith Mora as we're playing here? Queen's Gambit? Wow, that would be impressive if the Queen's Gambit was refuted. Because the Queen's Gambit is barely a gambit. It's like only a gambit in name. England, Stafford. I think, yeah, I think those are two pretty safe bets that are probably just lost if played uh, correctly. Wow, did I really play Queen C7 with White's Rook on C1? That was a pretty reckless move, John. <laughs> okay, Knight D5 was probably a little stronger there. Now I think against this one, White might have bailed me out. I'm asking you guys about refuted gambits, and Ziga is about to refute my play, but I think Knight, knight B5 was not the best. Let's just trade this now. I'm happy with swaps here. Still up the pawn. And now I think I'm going to go D5. I think it's time for this move. Take this way. I'm liking it. Um, let's take. Okay. Let's go here. Guard this pawn. We got to play a little fast, though. Terrible move I just played. Okay. I still think there's a decent chance I'm going to mate white here at some point. Don't rule it out. <laughs> Don't rule it out. Whoa. I think white's panicking. Oh, I could have done it. I could have done it on the last move. <laughs> Go back. Go back to knight f2 so I can mate you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was a funny sequence. Literally could have played that just as I drew it up and I didn't play it. Check. Take. Okay, the walls are closing in on white. This is looking rough. Ah, let's just take. Let's just simplify this. Okay. Ziga resigns. <laughs> Thanks for the game. Yeah, I think this was going pretty well for me up until queen c7. Maybe you had an opportunity for knight d5 here. Definitely the best move. I should have known better. I think, I believe this file was closed. Like you had a pawn here or something, as might happen in a normal Sicilian. But yeah, watch, watch queen c7 with a rook on c1 opposite the queen. <laughs> Where in the opening could you have played better? You know, I'm not... Not a huge expert on this line. I do know knight d5 is a move you can always consider. Like, um, you know, throwing the knight in here is not an absurd idea in many cases. Looks like in this case I can castle or play knight a5, but well, let's just say I play the knight somewhere like this is a constant idea. So do look at some knight d5 ideas. But I think this formation is one of the more challenging options at black's disposal. If we look in the Masters database, some games here. Um, but yeah, A4, I was kind of criticizing that move. I think that move is a bit slow. It looks like white almost always castles here. And then black plays this. Or As someone said in the chat, Geary likes bishop B4 here. Interesting. Okay, thank you for the game. Oh, blundering noob. Here we go. Blundering noob, this is an adoption game. You are 0-9 against me? This is huge. Chat, blundering noob needs your help. They're on the verge of joining the Bartholomew clan. Let's just make sure blundering noob knows. Yeah, blundering nude means your energy, both on Twitch and YouTube. I'm looking at your guys' comments about the gambits. Uh, Albin counter gambit, interesting. You think the Albin might be busted? Black Mardemer, Colorado gambit. Yeah, Colorado is pretty bad. <laughs> oh. Wow, those are fighting words. But if you make a statement like that, you know, you got to back it up. 
<laughs> okay, I probably should have taken on D5, but that's okay. Give him a draw? No way. No way. <laughs> All right. Can I throw this move in? This looks kind of annoying for black. Because black might be missing the bishop able to go to d7. This bishop's kind of floating out here, you know? Hmm. Actually, this move might be big time trouble. Because I'm seeing now if queen d6, I have the move c5. C5 looks pretty painful. Danish gambit. Is the marshal a gambit? Yep, marshal is a gambit, absolutely. I would say marshal is one of the most sound gambits out there. I would be really interested in the borderline gambits, though, like Smith Mora, um, King's Gambit. I think King's Gambit is a lot worse than the Smith Mora, for the record. Like, I, I posited on stream that, um, in my opinion, the Smith Mora is, or it's, sorry, the King's Gambit is probably losing for white. I know that's a semi bold statement, but I think it's that bad. Okay, Rook B8. That's, that's probably like a mature reaction from Blundering Noob. Let's go here. I'm trying to get them to blunder, but so far, so far they're not living up to their username. What about the Evans? Mm, I think Evans is okay for white. Personally. All right, let's take now. Mm-hmm. Let's take here at this point. We'll grab this pawn with check. Mm, let's take here. I think I'm in a castle now. Because I kind of want to defend this pawn, so it seems best a castle. I don't know, though. Black might have some compensation here. This doesn't look terrible. For blundering. Yeah, it takes here. I can't go E3 because of this. So I got to play this a little careful. Let's go here. Block this bishop. If check, I'm going to mosey up to C2. Mm, but okay, I see some way. Maybe, maybe check and then bishop E3 was actually okay there. Now I'm going to try to take on C4 and get coordinated. This blocks this bishop. It's kind of nice. Geller Gambit? Mm, interesting one, too. Yeah, that's another one that's borderline. Borderline acceptable Gambit. The Bushkas Gambit. Is that a e4, e5, knight f3, bishop c5, allowing knight takes e5? I think it is. That one seems like a hard sell. I don't know how you make that work. <laughs> okay, I've established the reverse bathtub. Things are looking up. Let's go here. We're just kind of playing for the end game here. Because I am up a pawn. Wondering noob, one second away from adoption. <laughs> oh, and there we have it. 10 0. GG. <laughs> Greetings, blundering noob. <laughs> the 10 0. It took a while, though. It took a while. We've had some interesting battles for sure. Has blundering noob always challenged me? Where they're playing black. I'm trying to figure that out. Whoop. My Lee Chess is not allowing that. But I feel like I play the white pieces against Blundering Noob quite a lot. So thanks for the game.
You know, I actually think that might have been fine for you in the middle game. Despite losing that pawn. Yeah, look at this. This is a bit risky for me because you have the bishop pair. Something along these lines. I'd have to be super careful here because I got to give it back. So I'm thinking I actually kind of misplayed it somewhere around here. Yeah, evidently not going for the pawn is the much better option. C takes, takes, take here. This crossed my mind. I wasn't sure about pawn takes, but apparently now this is a better line because of something like this. So you had chances, Blundering Noob. Absolutely. Thanks for the game, as always. The Jerome Gambit? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Jerome Gambit's pretty bad. You mentioned the bathtub structure reasonably often. Is that actually a known defensive structure? Or is that primarily a joke? It's primarily a joke. Good luck, Mr. Uh, Doc Pro Dr. Prof. Yeah, it's primarily a joke. You won't find like bathtub structure referenced in any books. Or if it is, it's... Uh, a relatively, a relatively recent um, publication. <laughs> okay, now I get to go here with Tempo. Okay, so this is a standard line, but I've actually gained a move on it because Black took a detour with their bishop. Let's see if I can get e4 in. If it is, it's a terrible book, right? <laughs> it just references like bullet and blitz games. Ooh, not enough defenders there. Not enough defenders or attackers, rather, I should say, on that point. Spooky pants. Okay, so I'm up a piece now for a pawn. This is the idea now. Take and get ready for the skewer. Oh, what's up, Yuho? Hey, good to see you in the chat. Are you watching Gari's stream? Shout out to Gari. Very good. Okay. Um, 95 or Queen D6 check looks pretty good here. Prelude to doubling up. I'm going to go for that. Does Magnus teach? Does he have any chess students? Not as far as I'm aware. I think people would pay a lot of money for that, but as far as I'm aware, Magnus does not have any regular students. You never know, though. Maybe Magnus is, like, coaching some random person and has been working with them for years. That would be kind of funny, right? It was just revealed he's like working with some random club player or something. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the A pawn too much. I'm just going to try to get my rooks doubled. You don't know if Magnus would be a good teacher? Well, uh, I will say so. You know, I mentioned this before, but I've had the pleasure of uh, recording some content with him for Chessable. Uh, this was back in 2020, like right before the pandemic. And I will say he was amazingly instructive. So when he wants to, he can really create some like instructive content. I think it's just purely a question of motivation for him. But when we were recording with him, he was in a really good mood. He was liking going through the material that he was recording. It was based on his games from like his past, um, you know, key battles in his chess career. We're mostly talking about strategy and end games. And he was like on point. And I'll tell you what was also incredible. So Magnus very keenly remembered like what he was calculating in games from like 15 years ago or more. It was crazy. He remembered like all the variations, sub variations. Um, I don't think he even needed to prepare. It was just 
all stuff that he recalled and and um his recollection of exactly his thought process was insane and i'm used to hanging around title players who can do that but i mean the level he's at with that is is just pretty wild thank you spooky pants for the game so this was largely determined by that blunder you made when i put the pawn on d5 always double check that you have enough attacker slash defenders on a certain point because i've got the two and you have the two but that's not going to bode well for you making the first capture so you should play d6 here d6 which stops my d pawn in its tracks even castles would be a blunder, right? Because it allows d6 and your bishop is trapped. Thanks for the game. All right. We're about halfway through our stream today. Hey, Nettostup, good to see you. Good luck, good luck. This is uh, someone I know primarily from Twitter, actually. So good luck to you. Let's play a uh, Danish Gambit. Kind of similar to the Smith Mora. It's like the same idea let's see what we get out of this all right take so now i've got the two pawns in the middle black has to be careful here okay i like d5 a little bit better d5 i think would have been more challenging Didn't Hans Kamak call the bathtub structure the court grip? I don't know about that, Dana, but I know um, he had a number of interesting terms for pawn structures, so I wouldn't doubt it. Like the one I always remember is the padlock pawn structure, which is where you have like two pawns on one rank against two enemy pawns with one rank in between. That's the padlock. You can lock it up whichever side advances first. The other side can advance the adjacent pawn, and completely lock it up. Okay, let's play a challenging move here. Let's go bishop c4. A little bit tricky. Queen e7. Yeah, that is a move on move 3. I think the engines like that one, actually. Queen e7. Going after this pawn. Okay, now, anytime I see this early bishop development, personally, I'm always looking at this as a reply. Because it hits this and hits this. In the style of, like, Morphe versus the Duke and the Count, that famous game. So I think black now really has to be careful. Mm. GZT says, yeah, every instructional thing I've seen from Magnus has been incredi incredible. It really tempts me to pull the trigger whenever he puts something out. He is very, very good at it, for sure. Again, in my opinion, it's just a question of um, how much he wants to put out in that regard because it's really good stuff, for sure. You know, maybe if uh, he ultimately does retire, God forbid, um, maybe he'll do more of that. <laughs> I'm just reading my opponent's comment here. I don't know. I've missed queen traps before. Magnus needs to stream. Yeah, if Magnus streamed, what do you guys think he would average on Twitch? Twitch or YouTube. How many viewers do you guys think? I mean, Hikaru, we know, is um, the biggest streamer in the game for chess. And, I mean, he seems to average, I'd say, like, five to 6,000 viewers. And oftentimes, you know, pretty significantly higher if there's a big event going on. So I got to imagine Magnus, if he streamed regularly, he'd pull double that on average, if not more. No disrespect to Hikaru, but I mean, Magnus is the world, still the world champ, and his name is just such a recognizable name, even for people who, you know, have a passing interest in chess. Ooh, I'm so close to checkmating here. Knight takes c7, king e7. Can I do some sort of queen takes d6? I don't think so. That's not quite mate. I could pivot back around and win the pawn. Um, I'm trying to end this with a checkmate, but let's go here. Attack the rook. Maybe 20,000. Uh, Beast Incarnate says 12,000 to 18,000. And Magnus is pretty entertaining too as a streamer, right? 
I think we know that. Okay, uh, let's go here. He had over 20k when he was streaming some of the Lee Chess events. Oh yeah, those were fun, yeah. I like how he always streams on that one um, particular account, like Maskinison or something. And it's totally casual. Like, he doesn't even have an avatar for that Twitch profile. <laughs> it's just, like, completely for the uh, the moment, you know? Streaming in the moment. Yes, thank you for the game, Neto Stup. Much appreciated, much appreciated. So watch with the early bishop development on the queen side. Watch these sort of tactics with bishop c4, queen b3. Because b7 is vulnerable. Also f7 a lot of times in these lines can be vulnerable. You know, personally, I think the easiest way to deal with this gambit, if you're facing the Danish, is to go d5 on move 3. I'm a big fan of the rule, like, take the first pawn, not the second pawn. I've mentioned that many times before on my channel when going up against a gambit. Now, taking is certainly fine as well. But this is a pretty clean way to counterattack in the center. And after takes, all these trades... Black tends to generate pretty decent pressure against uh, the pawn here. You can actually see this is a line where black does quite well at master level. So thanks for the game. Okay, Porifera. Porifera, we have two games with one another. Let's play e4 in this game. There's a clip of Magnus ripping his shirt on stream when he loses. I, th I think I saw that clip recently. It's from one of the Lee Chess Bullet Arenas. And is this guy a Stafford player? Yep. This is Eric Rosen's influence. This is what we got to deal with. This is my uh, recommendation against the Stafford. If you want a fairly easy way to get Stafford players out of book a lot of times. Knight takes e4, I think is already a pretty big mistake. Because I have this move. I feel like they're not ready for d4. When you just anchor the knight and you invite them to take the pawn. But the order in which they take the pawn is important. They should take this first and then here. Although you have good options from there. Bishop c4, queen d5. Queen e2, this is trouble for black. Okay, because now I can take here. And I can play f3 and I'm going to win that piece. We got him. We reversed the file situation on black. Well, maybe it was never uh, going in one direction. Or in black's favor in the first place, but... Yes, Eric Rosen in shambles. Stafford crushed. Lee Chess put this in the clips for the YouTube channel. <laughs> no joke, Chess, if you're out there, this one's for you. Now I got to win, though. If I don't win this game, that's going to be embarrassing. So let's, <laughs> let's make sure we get this done. All right, so if takes, queen h4 check, g3, bishop takes g3. I probably don't want to allow that. So I'm thinking knight c3 might be the move here. I'm liking that. Knight c3, queen h4, then I play g3, probably. Let's do it. Because this, this is still pinned. Remember I was talking about like capitalizing on pins? We can still do that. I'm probably not going to take this pawn. Probably not going to do it. I think I'm just going to go bishop e3 here. Just develop. You like Danya's videos on how to dismantle the Stafford? Yeah, yeah. He's got some good content on that too, doesn't he? Uh, Rook B1 maybe. That seems reasonable. I'm probably still going to try to castle kingside. Castling queenside looked a little dangerous with this situation. I wasn't too keen to do that. So let's go like G3, Bishop G2, stuff like that. Also, there's Queen D2. Maybe Queen D2 is the safest here. Um, although then, mm, yeah, actually, let's go queen d2. Just try to unwind a little bit. Now bishop here, probably. Okay, he's threatening bishop takes a2, but, uh, mm, okay, I guess I can throw this in. Or is it necessary? Nah, let, let's let black have that one pawn. I'm cool with giving black that pawn. A, the a pawn will be weak for black. It's mostly important to castle here. Should I take a7? Nah, let's castle. 
Castle, uh, I'm going to send my queen over here. Still looks very good. Black has pawns for the piece now, but uh, even with two pawns, they're kind of weak. So I don't think we should be in any imminent danger. Let's go queen f2. Unpin. I think knight takes d5. I think go ahead and play this. Mm-hmm. Also on this, and maybe ambush Bishop A4 coming. Okay, let's take this first though. 39 seconds though. I gotta make sure I convert this for the clips. Check out the YouTube uh, channel for Lee Chess, by the way, guys, if you haven't already. Trade. Okay, looking good. We're coming in. Further pressure. Let's get doubled. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take here. Let's give a check. I'm going to go here. So if take, I take h7. Let's go... Let's just go back. Check. Trouble? It's collapsing for black. Well, I guess there's queen h8, but that's not a, <laughs> that's not a very appetizing move to play here. Let's give a check. And mate, there we go. Mate on the board with the flight square taken away. GG, thanks for the game, Pari Farah. You did a pretty good job of uh, whipping up some counterplay, but yeah, I think the damage was mostly done in the opening. So there you go. D4 on move four. Stafford Gambit refutation. Clip it and ship it. Okay, not a pure refutation, but a very good practical option against the Stafford. You don't play into the, to the tricks with knight takes c6. And again, I think best for black, take, and then knight takes e4. But here you have a variety of options. Bishop c4, queen d5. I think even uh, queen f3 is a decent move here. But with bishop c4 or queen d5, you threaten some stuff on f7. Like, uh, for example, if black plays this... You can take, and then queen d5 check. Picking up a pawn, because you're going to win the knight. You know, interestingly, I remember looking at queen d5 here, and this wins, if not for the somewhat surprising move queen h4, where black defends this, attacks here, allows this, but makes way for this, and this is somehow a draw. <laughs> so bishop f7 would be the better option here. All right. Thank you, Pori Farah. Yeah, it looks like, looks like we kept this pretty well under control from there. Hey, got a pretty clean bill of health. 36 average centipon loss. We'll take it. Who's up next? Perpixel. Hey, shout out to Perpixel. Long time viewer. Let's play a French defense. I like how people are just like talking about random gambits in the chat. Traxler, Muzio, Jerome. <laughs> uh, Shreyas asks, do you still play competitively? You know, I have not played um, an over-the-board tournament since 2019, late 2019. But, you know, I play online competitions. I play Title Tuesday on chess.com. Um... I play Lee Chess Arena sometimes, although it's been a while since I played my last one there. So I still consider myself competitive, but I would have to do some stuff 
especially investing some time into my openings to get back up to a level that I'd be happy with. Okay, now this is playable because I have a bishop on d7, so there's no bishop b5 check for per pixel after the capture here. You don't want to take the pawn on d4 too soon. So here, if you can visualize this, if I had done this first, I would have won, I would have ran in into bishop b5 check, which would win my queen. So that's the reason for bishop d7. Can you create clickbait content? I mean, I could, but... <laughs> I generally prefer not to. Okay, bishop e3. Um, I'm looking at my checks that I have available. These are all candidates. I'm not sure exactly which one's best. Let's play, let's play this one. That comes with checks, so white didn't have time to take my queen. And I'm going to go here. Just back this up, attack the pawn on e5, maybe eye this up. Like, I could see white blundering this and allowing check. I don't know how much of a blunder that is. Like, there is queen d1, but... All right, should I take this pawn? I think I'm going to. Feels a little bit greedy. But um, I don't see anything wrong with it. So let's do it. The mouth agape thumbnail? Yeah, classic, right? Ooh. This is... A rook. Now, I don't have a whole lot of development going on. So again, I got to be careful. I'm not relaxing despite being up this material. Yeah, that's right, Treyas. Treyas asks, uh, cool, so I'm guessing you aren't planning to get the GM title anytime soon. Yeah, and even, even if I was playing actively, the GM title is just something that you can never plan on, you know? You do your best to prepare, study, play, but... There's no guarantees you'll make it. It's not like studying for a degree or something where if you put the time in, you're going to get it. I unfortunately know a lot of IMs who've been trying for GM for quite a while and it just doesn't come. Could that rook have been defended? Yes, it could have. White well, could have played knight d2 here, which would connect the rooks. Oh, Tommy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> We're not going to repeat that one for the, the VOD audience. <laughs> Tommy with the sharp wit as usual. All right, queen here. If I'm reading that move correctly, I think white's going to try to play this, or maybe more likely bishop d4. Per pixel resigns. Okay, I actually thought your move was kind of interesting. I wouldn't have resigned if I were you, per pixel. Maybe they really had to use the bathroom, because, I don't know, bishop d4 looks kind of interesting. I was thinking about rook c8, but then I noticed the bishop d4 move. I probably would have played, like, queen f6 here. But you have some vague counterplay, so, yeah, I don't think you had to resign quite yet. It's losing, but, you know, you can, you can play on a little bit. You might have even played the best move. Let's see. Oh, que queen takes d5 is the best move here. That move crossed my mind. It's very flashy. Wow, the engine wants to do this to win the queen. I mean, I'd be okay with that because I'm already up a huge amount of material. That's pretty, pretty funny that the engine has that ranked as the top choice right now. This could change. I'm not giving it very long to think, but <laughs> queen, queen takes d5. On queen f4, the engine says I can just take this pawn. No queen f6. We don't need that, says the engine. You don't need to play cowardly chess like this, John. Just take another pawn. Yeah, so thanks for the game per pixel. Um, this is the, uh, what is the name of this gambit? The Milner Berry. That's right, the Milner Berry gambit. And again, one of the ideas is that white can afford not to defend the pawn sufficiently initially because there is bishop b5 check with the discovery winning the queen. So again, that's the purpose of bishop d7. However, if white castles here, this... Introduces some interesting theory. We'll pop open the database. White can play knight takes or knight bd2. And white does have compensation. This is like another one of these borderline gambits. You know, the engine's going to slightly prefer black a lot of times, but uh, there is compensation here for white. Black's burning a lot of time winning this pawn. Andres Toth recommends this in his e4 course. Yeah, this seems like an Andres line. He likes the development. He likes that active play. 
So look into this per pixel. Thanks for the game. WCIS Ethan House. Good luck to you. Let's play D4 again. Is playing the Berlin as white cowardly chess? Well, more accurately, black plays the Berlin against you. So I would say no. Because if you play Rui Lopez, you don't have a choice. Maybe you could say, is playing into a draw line in the Berlin cowardly? And I think you're going to get differing opinions on that. WCIS, are you there? Okay, we're going to have to move on. Still over 50 challenges. Wow. I think that flashed to 92. That's interesting. So when I accept the game, I think it briefly flashes how many challenges there are. So that's impressive. Thanks to everyone who uh, has challenged today. We still got a little ways to go. We're still streaming for another 40 minutes or so. Peart's opening here against Walter Ego. Hmm. Let's play. Let's just play knight c3, main move, defend the pawn. I'll play the Austrian attack. Pretty aggressive. A lot of theory in this line. It's been worked out pretty heavily. Who plays the Rui Lopez? I know, right? Berlin, more like Borlin. <laughs> Do I have any adv advice against the modern? I struggle deciding where to place pieces, fearing I'll walk into something. Yeah, you know, it can be tricky. Absolutely. Um, when your opponent is not making contact with your center, but kind of sitting back, waiting for you maybe to make the first move. I know that resonates with a lot of your guys' dating lives. Um, but I guess one thing I would say is try to prepare your pawn breaks. So you don't have to like push a pawn instantly in the center, but I'm going to play this now E5 and the knight is kind of lacking squares because I'm controlling all these. Well, more accurately, these ones, knight H5 would have ran into to, uh, G4. And now I'm going to start pushing. So if you can time a pawn break correctly, when your opponent's kind of sitting back with their pawns, you can maybe create problems, but don't feel the need to push immediately. Just build up behind your strong pawns. Maybe enlist the uh, help of one of your flank pawns. I'm sorry. I had to get a couple digs in against you guys today. You guys know the drill. Some friendly digs. <laughs> Ooh, okay. This could get fun. Let's take. We're going for a pretty brute force attack here. Okay, now I think this move might be working in this position. You know my motto on Lee Chess plays. If it looks interesting to me, I play it. If I'm not sure, but it looks fun, I play it. I would calculate this more in a longer game or, you know, maybe against someone my own rating. I think it probably does work. King takes, I'm going to go queen h5 check, use the pin. So king takes, queen h5 check, king g8. We might see this. And then I'm going to take with the bishop. And the reason I think this works is not only am I threatening queen h7 mate, but when, my, when white moves this rook, which is one of the only defenses. Ooh, actually, there might be one defense here for black. That's of interest. But I didn't see a great square for black to put the rook on because all these squares are covered. Yeah, I think. Okay, good. Knight f6. Only defense, I think. Because now on takes, black can take with the rook. And it still looks really scary, but I might not be mating. So let's do this. Now you got to take with the rook. Oh, not there. There runs into check. Might, uh, well, actually, I have mating too as well. That's probably better. But rook takes f6 would have been interesting. And I can mate with the pawn. Ugh. Okay, Walter, you found the best move there, knight f6. But yeah, you got to take with the rook to free up the f8 square for your king. I think it's probably pretty brutal, though. Yeah, f5 makes a lot of sense. Because um, you know what might be coming here? Let's just play something that looks normal-ish for black. Check. And then something like this. This is like a typical attacking pattern. Hitting the bishop. Uh, and also threatening queen h8 mate. Even if black takes, you mate them like this. So I think that damage was probably done. That said, how dare the automated analysis give this a uh, dubious mark? Queen h3. 
Knight e4, queen g, bishop d2, even bishop d2 is better than rook takes h7. Nah. I don't buy it. That's engine sorcery right there. I don't buy it. <laughs> you give this to a title player, rook takes h7 is the move that's coming to mind for them immediately. And if it's plus five, I think they play it. But let's see what the engine says. So take here, take. Rook f6, wow. Okay, yeah, I didn't consider rook f6 too closely, but I guess it's kind of the same reason. It gives the king the f8 square, and after this, this comes with tempo. Again, black's king is looking unsecure, insecure, but um, maybe playable. Prague is beating Carlson. Ooh, I really want to check that out, but I don't want to derail us from Lee Chess plays. But thank you for the game. Let's go on to Mennonite. Good luck to you, 1995. Adhering to the principle that it's better to be a strong 1900 than a weak 2000. I like it. <laughs> All right, let's play E5. Italian or Rue Lopez? Or Scotch? Italian it is. Okay, let's go Bishop C5. Good luck to my opponent as well. One of the strongest 1900s in the world, yeah. You guys know uh, Min Lei, the streamer Min Lei? He's frequently online. He plays a lot of Blitz, Bullet. Um, for a long time, he's kind of had the designation as one of the strongest IMs in the world. But he made his final GM norm at the World Open uh, last month. And so he's going to become a Grandmaster. His application has been submitted. He's going to become a GM. But I think that's a bad thing because he's going to lose his de facto strongest I am in the world status. He's now going to be just a run-of-the-mill grandmaster. Just a regular GM. Pathetic, says Son. I know, right? You got you to gotta think here. <laughs> this is a game of nuance, you know, even in the title system. Why Bishop B6? So I want to take on my own terms, take towards the center. I also didn't want to give white the option of capturing with the F-pawn because I'm actually playing this pretty aggressively, H6, G5, trying to create two points of contact, useful method in opening the position, two points of contact. Oh, and my opponent's already blundering. This allows me to take here, which I'm just checking for any complications there, but I can throw in this in-between move because I hit the white queen. I do not need to take this back right away. And now we'll capture. Now you can take the strongest I am title. I, maybe it'll be me someday. I think there are other uh, very strong I am's out there, so I can't claim to be one of the, the strongest I am's, but maybe. I have a chance at least, right? By not making GM. Okay, let's take. And now I just got to make sure not to get scholars mated on, on F7. A delayed scholars mate, that is. So let's go here. Ben Feingold had that title at some point too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Ben was like 25, 50 feet A, and he was still an IM. That's dedication to the craft. <laughs> Let's castle this way. I don't really want to castle this direction when White already has a pawn storm going. This is a little bit exposed, but it's fine. We'll go here. Hmm, okay. Should I meet fire with fire? Like, play this move? Looks a little risky. I think I'm better off playing, like, F6 or... Eh, F6 might be okay. Let's do that. If F5, I think I'll take then. Oh, actually, there's queen G6. I have to be a little careful. Queen G6. Maybe here... Maybe now I will take. Yeah, let's capture now. The king's just a little exposed, so of course have to be careful. Hmm, white does not take back. Kind of curious. 
leaves this pawn undefended, but I don't really like taking that right now. I think I should more so play to continue trading. Uh, maybe knight e5. How about bishop takes d5, though? That seems pretty good. Bishop takes d5 followed by queen here might be real clean. Oh, it takes with the queen, though. Okay. So white's really trying to keep that structure together. I don't know, though. Play for a trade. Mm, okay, let's go here. If check, I can block. Then I'm going to go here. If here, probably here. Still a bit of work to do because we're both low on the clock. So got to be vigilant always. Never let your guard down in chess. No, no. Mm, let's go here. I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to sack a pawn. Oh, no. Actually, it's not even a sack because on take, I can take. Okay, take now. Okay, take. And let's push. Just a bit of a time scramble, you know. Take. Just a casual time scramble. Check. Check. And take. All right. Thank you, Mennonite, for the game. Yeah, it got a bit tricky towards the end. Maybe I was a little loose with my king. I did never see anything concrete for you, but you had a bit of pressure, a bit of compensation later. Engine's not very convinced, but it felt that way in the game. Like, I, I had to be on guard here a little bit. Probably botched it slightly. But always watch those in-between moves. Yeah, so G4, I can understand the desire not to want to open up your king, but I think you got to move your knight or take. I don't think you uh, have too many choices. I thought he would play rook g4 after queen f2. Let me see. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought maybe something like this was coming. Whereupon I'd have to go to h5. Yeah, f5 is actually a pretty good move because it stops rook g4. Initially, I played it as a sacrifice, but then I realized I could in fact take because at the end, white can't take here due to queen takes g2 mate. So thanks for the game. But yes, watch those in-between moves. Okay, watch up here. It's going to show you how many challenges there are. It only shows it for a split second. You got to be fast. 84. Gago Kaba, you're up next. Good luck to you. Oh, Sangha, very kind of you, says, I want John to become a GM. Thank you. But again, I would lose the potential to be a strong I am if that happens. Let's play D6. I've been playing this a fair amount lately. Okay, we'll play modern style. Knight d2 is kind of offbeat, that's for sure. Okay, very quick e5 by my opponent. I have a feeling that's a bit loose, but let's see if I can prove why that might be the case. Let's go here. I'm on this. Also, maybe knight e3. That is actually a threat here. So I think white has to be a little careful. I think I can just take this. Looks like a pawn. And also, this pawn is very weak as a result. Um, take. Mm-hmm. Queen e6, maybe. I'll keep the pin here. Also hit the knight. So we're up two pawns. This is already dire for white. Let's play this, because I'm confident white's going to go b3. Didn't quite work. Okay. Um, now let's go queen takes c4. 
Pawn takes g4. And then I think queen takes c2. I could take that pawn on g4, but if I take it with the bishop, then queen takes b7. So let's let's take this one. My queen's really zooming around the board, but I'm a Scandinavian player, so I'm kind of used to that. Perhaps renounce your IM title and be the strongest FM. Ah, now that's an idea. That's a serious idea. Now you're thinking the way that, that such matters require. <laughs> Okay, do I take with the queen or the bishop? Both look pretty good. I'm going to take with the... Um, I don't know. I don't know which way I'm going to take. Let's take with the queen. Stay defending. I'll just develop the knight now. Go here. Okay, this move looks scary, but I don't think there's actually a threat because I cover both these squares. Bishop e6 seems like a pretty good response. Looks fine. All right. Being kettled queen, always a nice situation. I'll play this kind of greedy. We'll go here. I would expect knight d4. This position's a complete wreck for white, so white has to take whatever chances they can. But no, rook h3. This pawn's hanging too. But um, I'm just happy to get consolidated here. All right. Let's bring a rook over. And white's king is open to the elements. Okay, here, I feel like I should be close to checkmating. It's not quite a mate. Check. King kind of runs. This might be excessively greedy, but let's take another pawn. I just don't see why not. How about here now? Okay. Thank you, Gago, for the game. So e5 may be playable, but after knight g4, I think you have to do something, yeah, like knight b3. Oh, interestingly, the engine actually does really like your position here. But need to cover both this threat and this threat. So what does it want me to do? Knight d5? There's one game in the Masters database. Knight d5 is the move. Okay. Noted. Kind of reminds me of Alakine's defense. El Jochen's defense. Attack this. Get some play against the center. So knight d2, bit of an awkward move if you're going to try to play this aggressively like the Austrian attack. We just saw a game where I played knight c3. That's a bit more cohesive, right? Because the bishop's participating. Thanks for the game. Fred Grumbles, you are up next. We've got a couple games against one another. Good luck to you. Are you there, Fred? Maybe not. Okay. Let's go again. Boaz, good luck to you. 22-92. Another player pretty consistent across time controls. E4. Let's go Sicilian. I'll play A6. I like to play that against Knight C3. I kind of have mixed results in this, but um, I do like the general philosophy of this line. You don't develop the king side quite yet. You kind of stay out of range of uh, the white pawns, especially with Knight F6, E5. You're not really entertaining that yet. Okay, now I've played a title Tuesday game where I played b4 here and my opponent took. So I think I'm going to play this. This is just the safer option. I've also played this in the past. 
Because I think that's actually a pretty reasonable peace sacrifice for white. I wasn't aware of it at the time. But it is playable for white, for sure. Okay, let's go here. Now, I had one game. It, it was actually against uh, James Canty. It was an over-the-board game I played like eight years ago where he tried something like Knight H4, trying to get into F5. But this player plays Knight E5. Okay, let's go. Let's castle. I might play B4 at some point. Okay, but white voluntarily moves the knight back. Interesting. Let's go knight c6. I like my position. I'm nicely centralized here. I'm not in danger of uh, a white knight landing on f5 and causing me problems. Looks a little bit slow for white, if anything. So I'm liking this. Take, take here. Probably bishop f4, but then I technically have g5, right? Let's capture. I'm curious. Why do you want to play b4? Well, with the knight on c3, I might have wanted to play b4 to um, shake the pressure on d5. But as it happens, I'm pretty happy because white played knight e2 voluntarily. So I never even had to play b4. Okay, so white's giving the pawn... I suppose I should take it. Yeah, this is looking good. Okay. Just be a little bit careful. Maybe knight g6. Kind of like the look of this. Challenge the knight on f4. Maybe make way for bishop f4. Probably take this direction. If white takes. Okay, there. Uh, let's capture. And then bishop here. So I'm up the pawn. Attacking here. Let's play b4. Just lean on that structure a little bit. Still got to convert this, but the position looks very good. Up a pawn, up on the clock. King's pretty safe. Okay, passive move by white. Um, okay, I guess I'll take. Hmm. It might be nice to keep bishops on board, but... I'm also kind of looking at this move and then taking, but I do lose a8. I suppose I could do something like this, but that seems excessively fancy. So I think I'll just trade. And next, maybe queen a5 or queen d6, something along those lines. Let's go queen d6. Just to coordinate, get some pieces in the game. Mm-hmm. I did see this move. We'll go here. Not playing bishop c6 because of rook b6. I want to rule that out. Ah, this one. I missed this move. All right. I guess I got to go back. Bishop a8. So we got to give up the pawn on d5, but it's not a very healthy pawn for white. So at least we have that going for us. Hmm, white doesn't take it, though. Okay, I, th I would have thought c takes d5 was pretty much forced. Here, I can take this at a minimum, right? That does not look too good for white. Also, I can take b1. Let's take this first. Take here. Take here. Go here. Just play a little faster. Just 
Check. Push. He's chasing me all the way over. I'm pretty fast. I can be fast when I want to be. There we go. Okay, I was laddering. Whew. Okay. <laughs> Someone in the chat really didn't want me to flag, I see. <laughs> that message got held by the mod. All right. GG. Yeah, that was close. Um, Maybe... Maybe towards the end, White had some chances to draw, like, uh, like D6 somewhere, check, maybe. I felt like if White actually played C takes D5, this might have been, been fine. Maybe slightly worse, but not too bad. Could also do this, apparently, and then take. I was going to play something around my king, like G6, probably. But it's a slim advantage. I think maybe around here... I let some of the advantage go. I was trying to avoid taking on C3, but I didn't really come up with a good way to avoid that. Oh, D4 is actually pretty good here, huh? How does this work? So here, take. Oh, yeah. The engines, they're always so quick to point this out. Queen takes A8. Didn't even look at this move. I have Queen D4 check. Didn't see that. Queen D4 check, allowing for Rook takes A8. And then apparently, even though white's going to get two uh, pieces, two rooks rather, for the queen, my activity is too great. Probably my king being a lot safer than white's is the key thing. Seems obvious after the fact, but it never is in the moment, right? That's chess for you. <laughs> but yeah, good game, Boaz. Thanks for the game. And I think we'll have time for like two or maybe three games. Newfell, you're up next. 1832. No one has taken me down today or even got a draw yet, but there's still a chance. Newfell, are you there? All right, we'll move on. Omar, roughly the same rating. 1843. Mm hmm. Okay, let's play Al Jochen's defense. And Knight C3. This is one of the most solid responses. I'll play D5. We'll play it Scandinavian style. E5, D6, all those moves are playable there. Mm hmm. Go here. Attack the bishop. Um. It's been a while since I've looked at something like this. Let's go C5. I don't think this is the best move necessarily, but I'm going to try to control D4. We'll try to uh, influence that square a little bit. How long have I been doing Lee chess plays? That's a great question. I think I've been doing this for maybe like a year and a half. I think that sounds about right. Um, it's been really fun. We've been pretty consistent too. Like, every Sunday that I'm available, I've been uh, doing it. So, again, thanks to Lee Chess for making this happen. Check out the other Lee Chess Play streamers, too. They get other people in the mix. Sabina, Sabina Foyser frequently does it. Ooh, and I think C4. I actually didn't initially see that C4 was a threat when I played Rook D8, but that's a pretty nasty one. Specifically because without the Knight on C3, there's no Bishop A4. So that's actually pretty devastating. Oh, thanks again, Morphe's Law. Two Knights Tango. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, Sangha. That's the power of alignment. You know, Rook aligned with the enemy queen. You just want to develop a sense for setting that up. Okay, and now I think I'll retreat here. Try to consolidate the piece. I have a bit of a headache today, so the, the blindfold game will be interesting, guys. 
We will do the one blindfold game to end the stream. Again, we, mo uh, we might have a chance for two games. Depends how long this one goes. So I'm not counting my uh, undefeated score quite yet. It could all blow up in a single, single game. Or a single move, even. This looks pretty good. Yeah, and if white moves that one, I can either do this or this. Both are looking good. Let's just play this one. Go for the immediate fork. Now let's take. I think I'll take here. Why not? Just damages white's position a little bit more. H6. Look for queen g5. Queen g5 is a total buzzkill move. Trade queens when you're ahead. Get the king a little bit closer. And now I just want to figure out how to break through with the rooks. Kind of tough for white because every trade brings them closer and closer to defeat. Look for this. If a3, I'm going to go a5. There's a mini minority attack, just busting up this pawn structure, attacking a greater number of pawns. White can't keep it together. Rook c2, I have rook takes d4. Rook e3 could be played, trying to keep the structure together, but just a matter of time. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do this right away. Use the pin. <laughs> Take back request. <laughs> Thanks for the game, Omar. Tough one, tough one, because that C4 move just kind of catches you pretty clean. And there's not really a defense after that. So, yeah, I think you want to move your queen here. Queen E2, maybe? That's what I would think about doing if I were you. So thanks for the game. Let's try to get two more games in. Oh, Nightingale, you're back. We missed you earlier, but I think if you're challenging again, you're probably here. I'm glad I didn't get you for the blindfold game. Let me tell you. Let me say that. 2200 would be at the threshold for what I'm uh, maybe capable of beating or capable of defeating in a blindfold game with 3-0. Okay, I saw a Kramnik game that went like this one time, so I'm kind of trying to imitate that. Playing a lot of useful moves before I commit this bishop. Or trying to. This position already looks pretty sketchy for black. I would be a bit nervous if I were Nightingale, because, yeah, like now I can take this. That probably wins a pawn. I can also play f4. Oh, there's knight takes f7, too. That might be the cleanest move of all. Yeah, let's take on f7. I get the bishop as well. It's pretty nice. Oh, but that is even worse, Nightingale. That's a tactic that happens in the London system fairly often, by the way, guys. So do be aware of that. Okay, we'll go here, attack the, bi the, attack the knight with the bishop. Yeah, this is devastating. We can castle. My king looks pretty secure here. I can take this bishop whenever I want. But I love the knight on d6. It's so stable. So uh, I might even just play c5 and kind of solidify it. All right. Black is swinging for the fences. I mean, why not? <laughs> why not, right? Check. Probably king here. Mm hmm And now, this move, I think, traps the queen almost. There is knight g4, I suppose. But near trap of the queen. All right. And Nightingale resigns. Yeah, I think they were a little uncomfortable with this setup. Personally, I think this version of the QGD slash Semislav is already a little sketchy for black. 
Black should be somewhat worse. Putting the pawn on c6 this early, a bit defensive, a bit passive. So thank you for the game. All right, and here we go. We only have a few minutes left in the stream, so let's set this up. Go into our preferences and go into blindfold. You all have this option if you have an account on Lee Chess. And as usual, if you want to see it from my perspective, aka no pieces, just a blank board, keep it tuned in here. If you want to see the pieces, go follow me on Lee Chess. My username is Fins. You can find me. Cash me on Lee Chess. <laughs> How about that? And we're off. Hey, Rye Bread. Hey, we get a, a longtime viewer. Shout out to Rye Bread Fungus. Opening with E4. Let's play Scandi. True to form. All right. Queen takes D5. I got to stay out of time pressure. That's key. Let's go to Queen A5. Thanks, everyone. As usual, for tuning in to Lee Chess Plays. This was a blast today. Some interesting games. Some good discussion. Learned a vocabulary word. Uh, okay, bishop d3. Um, let's go ahead and take. I'd expect Rybrad to take with the queen. Yep. Okay, we'll go c6. Early trade of the um, light square bishops. Okay, now that lines up with my queen. However, the knight is currently in the way, so always a little dangerous, but let's anticipate where rye bread moves that night. Or if they move it at all. Rook f e1, okay, fine. Let's go uh, bishop e7, I think. Yeah, let's cover the file. I see things pretty clearly here. This is a pretty stable pawn structure, so... You know, I have pawns here and here. White has one here. All good on my end so far. Yeah, thank you, casual player. Dark rye bread is goaded. Yeah, I do like rye bread as well. It's pretty tasty. Okay, now my queen is under attack, so let's drop back here. C4, aggressive. Pretty normal move, though. Gain space. Let's castle. We're crouching behind our formation as usual. I'm going to play rook f e8. The subs guard e7. It kind of rules out any knight f5 operations. b3. Yup. Let's centralize. I think rye bread's doing fine so far. This looks pretty normal. I think the position's about equal. Maybe a tiny edge for white because of the space advantage, but pretty, pretty level. Let's go a5. Maybe a prelude to bishop b4, something along those lines. Just gain some space. Yeah, it's not a pure blindfold game because of the notation. That's right. Pure blindfold, you wouldn't even see this. All right. Um, let's go here. There's no white pawn on a3 as far as I recollect, so I'm okay to play this move. Wait a minute. Isn't that a free pawn? Because Rye Bread just played this move, right? This move makes me nervous, but I think that's free. I'm pretty darn certain that's a free pawn. Probably Rye Bread just forgot that their rook is on B1 instead of A1. Okay, now B4, let's take, we're going to get a big trade here. I can pre-move this. Rook takes, yup, okay. Um, Maybe C5 at this point. This seems like a pretty natural move here. Attacks D4 and also the Rook. Pre-move the Knight capture. After the Knight captures, I'll be threatening Knight D3 with a fork. Okay, but Rybrid goes Rook B5. I'm going to take... And on knight takes, where do I want to move my knight if I move the knight at all? No. Doubles up the rooks. Okay. But now, again, I like this knight c5 move because this helps hold this pawn. Also, it, it holds this pawn on d4. My rook on d8 is participating. I've got rooks here and here. So 
So we're doing good. We're up two pawns in this position. There, this is a kind of threatless move though, right? Because I do guard this. Still, I'm going to play d3 just to be safe, just to block the queen's potential axis here. Just a useful move as well. Queen d2. Uh, now let's play h6, challenge the knight. That loses a piece, right? Take. Because I've got two knights on that square. White only has the one. Now we're on the queen again. And Rybred, Rybred resigns. Thank you very much for the game. Yeah, so uh, kind of fell apart when you played A3. I think up till this point, Rybred, you're playing just fine. But maybe you forgot that you had played Rook B1, so A3 was not defended. But otherwise, you were doing just fine. Hey, I got a 9 average centipon loss. Always got to be proud of that in a, in a blindfold game in particular. But this is my wheelhouse opening. I feel very comfortable in the Scandi. If you ever play blindfold, it's good to play solid structures, lines you're familiar with. So the fact that I played this structure a million times is pretty darn helpful to me. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, joining in Lee Chess Plays today. Whoops, I'm messing up my layout. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is a lot of fun, as usual. If you didn't get a game, I do apologize. It's hard to get to everyone, impossible to get to everyone who challenges. Um, so feel free to send a challenge next week. And remember, everyone has an equal chance of being selected. You can challenge early, and if it sits in the queue, no problem. If you happen to be away from the keyboard, also no problem. You can always challenge again. So thank you guys. Thanks to uh, Lee Chess as well. You all have a great week, and I'll probably see you guys next Sunday. Take care, everyone. Thanks to the Lee Chess mods, by the way, too. All right, we'll see you later, both.